Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to Technically Explained. In the previous lecture, we used the indirect method of sketching PM and FM. Now, this indirect method is valid as long as the message signal is a continuous signal. If you can see over here at this at this example, the message signal was a continuous signal. So that's why we use indirect method. When the message signal is not a continuous signal, in that case, indirect method cannot be used. So we are going to do an example 5.2 in this video which in which we are going to use the direct approach. Okay, so let us do this example 5.2. Again, we are going to sketch the FM and PM for the modulating signal shown. In this time, the signal is not a continuous signal. We have discontinuities over here. That is why for the phase modulated where we cannot use the indirect approach, we are going to use the direct approach. But for the frequency modulation, we are going to use the same procedure. That is the instantaneous frequency is again equal to fc plus kf divided by 2 pi into m of t. Again the maximum amplitude of m of t is 1, the minimum is minus 1. So if I put in values, the fi max is going to be equal to 100.1 megahertz as found out previously. And the fi min, the minimum instantaneous frequency will be 99.9 megahertz. So I can quickly sketch this. Uh, frequency modulated wave. So this is the result in frequency modulated wave. This is my 100.1 megahertz. Let me write it over here. This is 100.1 megahertz and this is 99.9 .9 megahertz for the negative half cycle. Again this is 100.1 megahertz for the positive half cycle. This is max maximum instantaneous frequency and minimum instantaneous frequency and then again maximum instantaneous frequency. So this is how we plotted the frequency modulated in the previous uh, example. Now for phase modulation we are going to use the direct approach. Since kp is equal to pi by 2, so for, so for pm we are going to have the phase modulated wave we are going to use the direct approach a cosine omega ct plus kp m of t. And kp is pi by 2 in this case. So we are going to have a into cosine omega ct plus pi by 2 into m of t so when m of t is equal to 1 that is the maximum amplitude we are going to have a sine of omega ct in that case we are going to have a sine of omega ct when m of t is equal to 1 and when m of t is equal to minus 1, we are going to have minus a sine of omega ct. So the phase model modulated sketch will be like this. So this was my message signal and at the point where I have discontinuities, I am going to have impulses at the derivative of the message signal. Now at, at the impulses or at the uh, time where I have the change in the amplitude of the message signal where I have the discontinuity there will be a phase shift. If you can see over here I have an impulse over here where I have a discontinuity over here and this continuity leads to the phase shift of pi. If you can have a look over here, here I have a phase shift of pi and here again at the second impulse where again I have a discontinuity over here where again the amplitude changes from minus 1 to 1 I have a phase shift of pi. So this is my phase modulated wave where the phase changes with respect to the amplitude of the message signal. Here the amplitude changes I have a phase reversal of pi by of pi. Similarly here where the amplitude changes I have a phase reversal of pi so on. So this is called phase modulation in analog communication and in digital it is called phase shift key because the phase is changing with respect to the amplitude of the message signal. Wherever I have the change in amplitude of the message signal, the phase has changed. Here I have the change in the amplitude of the message signal, here the phase has changed by pi. And this amount of phase change is given by kp by md. Here md is the change in the magnitude, is, is, is the change in the amplitude of the message signal. For example, here I have the kp of pi by 2 and the change in the magnitude of the message signal or the change in the amplitude of the message signal is 2 from minus 1 to 1. So pi by 2 multiplied by 2 I have pi. So that is why I have a phase change of pi over here. So the phase change or the amount of phase change at the time of discontinuity will be equal to kpmd. 
Also to avoid ambiguity at the receiver side, this KPMD is restricted to the range of that is the phase deviation is restricted to the range from minus pi to pi in case of the digital signal.